I'm recording, bro. Yeah, we should. You had a time I showed you. I One, two, three, one, two. These two are the middle. I'm the middle. Because <laughs> look, there's three. Three. I'm the middle. Well, look, this one's the middle. Dot, right? Yeah, it's the middle dot, but granted, it's like weird. One, two, three. Technically, you two are the middle. Yeah. Miss, I'm taking a video of you waving, telling us to wave. <laughs> a video of a video? <laughs> That's so bad. Go ahead, shoot. Alright, we only have a half an hour. I guess I'm going to have to talk about the solar system too much. So I know that. Well, we're going to go to some cool places in the solar system and maybe stuff that would know what's going on, okay? So, first, let's talk about the solar system, not what planets are where, but let's say how far away things are so we get a really good idea of how big the solar system is. How far from the sun is the Earth? Uh, 300 million miles. 200 million miles, really? It's 93 million, okay? So 93 million miles. So, as we start, Expanding out, it's really hard to compare solar system size with millions of miles. So there's a unit for that distance. It's Aust called an astronomical unit. You heard that term, an AU? Yeah. So that's what that is. It's the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So we can use that. So then Mars is 1.6 AU. So that's pretty close, okay? Now we get to Jupiter. How many AU? Anybody, any ideas how much further away from the Earth is Jupiter than the Sun? Nine. Five, okay? So five. that's how it goes. So it's five times further. So when we take a rocket ship to Mars, it's pretty easy. Jupiter is five times further. All right, Saturn. What do you think? Nine. Nine. Close. Ten. Damn it. It's ten. So twice as far away as Jupiter. Again, you send a rocket, it takes twice as long to get to Saturn. Far. Uranus. Fourteen. Twenty. Twenty. Uranus is twice as far away as Saturn. We've made, we've got spaceships in orbit around Mercury. Well, we can. Mercury, Venus, of course, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. We've flown by Uranus. We've flown by Neptune. They're too far away. We haven't actually done a whole lot there. Neptune is 30 times further. Okay, another 10 times. Then we get out to the Kuiper Belt, with where the X planet is, Pluto. It's about 42 times further away. And the reason that Pluto is called the what? You know the name? Right now? Dwarf. The dwarf planet. It's and, not the moon, isn't it? And it's because that little world up in the upper right that you see called Eris, we just discovered Eris in the early 2000s because it's 68 times further away, but it's as big as Pluto. Okay, it's just almost the exact same size. So the deal was that John was like, well, it's Eris the 10th planet. Um, then we found Makimaki, Homea, Sedna, and the list goes on. So the decision was those are dwarf planets. So we now take tests in school, you have eight planets and extra credit for dwarf planets, okay? So that's how it can go. But anyway, that's one of the main reasons is because of errors. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is go look at some of the cool stuff. And we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on a lot of boring planets. Um why <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half an hour or so, the closest planet is Venus. Mercury. Mercury. And of course, it, it's sort of boring. I mean, it looks like a moon, it's got no atmosphere. The only cool thing is that it has an iron core about the size of Earth's, which means what? It had, it had to be way bigger at some point. It's got an iron core the size of Earth's. So at some point, Mercury got blasted early in the solar system. So that's kind of cool, but we don't know a lot about it other than that. Boring, too much other stuff to do. All right, next planet is? Venus. And Venus is another planet we know very little about because it's we're too not much looking at a planet, right? We're looking at a lot of clouds. 
Um, clouds are really thick. Carbon dioxide. Uh, we know so little about it. There, the range of theories about this are that it was Earth-like for three billion years. Two, it's never had water. Okay, that's the current range. So hypotheses about a planet that you can't go to. Why can't we go? Today. Russia landed on it in the 1970s. Landed about 12 of them or 11 of them before it actually got onto the surface. And we now know that the temperature is, anybody know how hot it is down there? 800 Fahrenheit? 800 No, it's 800 Fahrenheit, about 900 Fahrenheit actually. So I, I've got them transferred to Celsius real quick in my head. But, so really, really hot. And the pressure, you know, we call what we're feeling right now one atmosphere of pressure. Of course, we're at higher than sea level, so it's less than that. But it's 90 on the surface of Venus. So it's 90 atmosphere, atmosphere pressure. It's eight, 900 degrees. And there's enough sulfur coming out that it actually raises sulfuric acid. So it's kind of a, it's a fascinating world, but it's really hard to explore. So we've hardly done anything. We've gone around it, and we're going back to do some really good radar mapping. But it hasn't been an appealing place to go. So we're not going to spend a lot of time here because you guys spend all of your time here. So Earth. How old is Earth? 4.5 billion years old. 4.5 billion, that's very good. How do we know that? We don't have any rocks on Earth that are 4.5 billion years old. Why not? We have erosion, we have that, we have plate tectonics, so most of all rocks are gone. Where have we gone to find old rocks? The, the moon. Yes, the moon. We've got 850 pounds of rocks back in the moon. You can look at rocks and you can tell how old they are. The oldest rocks are about 4.44 billion years. And that looks like what's gone on. We've got a really old solar system. And we've also got two sides of the moon. You'll see as we come around, we can actually split it in pieces so we we'll all see the same thing. So this is the near side, right? And this is the far side. And we never see the far side from Earth. Why not? This is what we're locked to, right? The moon goes around the Earth, completely locked to Earth. That was Earth and walk. I go around like this, right? The gravity of Earth is pulling on us so much that the moon is blocked. And so this side of the moon, after it got locked, stayed volcanically active longer. All we're looking at here is extra volcanic. This is like lava fields. The far side of the moon does not have any of that. It's just impact craters. So that's what's going on the moon. Um, and that's how we know a lot about the solar system because we've gone there. All right. But we're going to spend a lot more time here. Because we've gone here by far the most any planet, right? Mars. Oh, I want to see one other thing. Let's go back. Do you have on the moon where we have landed on the moon? I actually do. It's not on this one, but I do have a picture of that. Oh, really? I can go find it, yeah. Before the end, I would love to see that. All right, so first, there's three big things that let life exist here. All right, give me the two easy ones. Water. And? Oxygen. So the third one is really important. It's the reason we have oxygen and water on this planet. When planets formed 4.5 billion years ago, they started cooling down. Heavy stuff falls to the middle. And so what's in the middle of Earth? We have an iron core, right? Our core is still liquid in parts. It rotates around and generates a magnetic field. We have a big magnetic field. What does that do? Solar winds from the sun would kill all of us, okay? Our life, carbon-based life, would not survive the, the danger from the solar winds. It hits the magnetic field, it goes around, and at the North Pole, you see it often doing what? Makes the northern lights, right? It makes the aurora borealis. That's the magnetic field deflecting the solar wind around the Earth coming down at the North Pole. So we have a magnetic field, and it's essential to life on Earth. So when we go to other places, let's talk about that, especially when we go here. We explored Mars a lot, right? Um, when, does anybody, when's the first time we flew by Mars and knew that it didn't have life? You didn't know that. Should know. 
We flew by. Well, no, 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 I'm sorry, not Mars. I'm talking, um, I mean, Mars was in 64. So 19, before 1964, any science fiction book would have been okay. We had no idea what Mars looked like. We flew by in 64, and when they flew by, and it didn't go into orbit, they flew by, and this is the side they saw. All they saw were craters. And it was a huge disappointment for the engineers and scientists at NASA. So this is all we saw. It wasn't until 64 that we even knew this. So then we started going around and looking for stuff. And by the time we've got something called the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, we have a spy satellite, essentially, in orbit around Mars. And we can see really small stuff. And we can tell that rocks on Mars are magnetized. And it looks like Mars had a magnetic field for a billion years. Okay? As we said, the planets are four billion years old. We had a billion years. One of the other things we didn't talk about on Earth was it's been cooled down for about four billion years on Earth. When do we see the first life signs, microorganisms on Earth? When did they, do you know when we first see evidence of those? Precambrian age? Isn't it the precambrian? It's 3.8 billion years ago. We see the first signs of microscopic life. Life formed on our planet essentially instantly. And that means nothing for anywhere else, but it gives us some hope that if we go somewhere else, life formed instantly on Earth. I mean, almost as soon as the planet had the ability to have life, it had life. So we come here to Mars. Whoa, Mars had a magnetic field for a billion years. Did it ever have water? Did it ever have an atmosphere? So we've been going there to find these things out. We had a couple of little rovers here an opportunity, but the first big one was Curiosity that we sent there 11 years ago. And these are giant rovers, right? These things are the size of SUVs. So we sent the Curiosity there 11 years ago and the first appearance two years ago. So now you guys get to see a little movie. How do you get the what? I did. Yeah, I said spirit oh, not the baby. Yes. So we sent them there. I know. And of course, if you've seen the great little movie on Oppie, on Can it. I yes, yes. <laughs> and it found a lot of stuff, but nothing was absolutely sure of it. So we sent Curiosity to follow up on spirit and not the baby to see what's going on. The little ones, if you remember, they just threw them down in balloons and they bounced yeah. around. Yeah. But you can't throw these down with balloons. They're huge. There's just a whole different, this is a whole science lab. So you get these down very differently. You leave Earth at 20,000 miles an hour. You slow down a little by the time you get to Mars because the sun's gravity. So we just still come at it at 12,000 miles an hour. And you get seven minutes to land. Mars's atmosphere is 1% of Earth's. Very, very tiny carbon dioxide atmosphere. So trying to slow down is hard. Um, when you come in, you still have the heat shield that slows you down a little. And then what's the next thing you do on Earth? When you come in, you slow down with the heat shield, and then you show, throw off giant parachutes, right? Again, Mars has got a tiny atmosphere. So NASA put another rocket ship in the rocket ship. It's got retro rockets, very sci-fi, very cool. This thing comes down, and at the bottom of it is the rover. And it lands the rover just boom, on the ground. And that's how we've got the last two rovers to Mars, and they've worked perfectly. Even with this crazy methodology, they've worked perfectly. So the first one landed 11 years ago, and this is Mars. This is where it landed. This is a Gale Crater on Mars. So this thing has been roaming around here for 11 years. Do we see any solar panels? No. How is this thing powered? Anybody know? What? A battery? Batteries are in. They're nuclear submarines. <coughs> they are run with plutonium. It gives off heat. These things are like nuclear submarines. It's been there for 11 years and it's gone strong. It will last as long as the plutonium lasts or the wheels last. The wheels are starting to break down. But anyway, it's been here roaming around this crater and everywhere it roams in this crater, it can look at rocks. Geologists can take rocks and tell if those rocks were formed near water. And this whole thing was a liquid. Everywhere it looked, every rocket found was formed at the water. 
fact, if you look in the distance, it's over by you guys now, you see those hills in the distance? And they're coming around here, and then they come around over here, and see so you cut around over there. We are gonna look up close at that. And this, I'm gonna cut this as well, so we all can look at the same thing. Come on, cut for me. And that is rocks on Mars. That's not Earth. Those are sedimentary rocks on Mars that we have. It's rolled over and looks just like what you see on Earth. We know we had water on Mars. We had water, we have to have an atmosphere. We have to have enough pressure to keep water in a liquid state. So we had water and atmosphere. We think potentially for a billion years on Mars. A billion years. So we're looking around, not for active life, but perhaps that fossilized stuff we found on Earth, fossilized microorganisms. We had microorganisms 3.8 years ago on Earth. How long did it take for animals and plants to evolve? 3.8 billion, then how long, when did we have the first animals and plants on Earth? 600 million years ago. We had nothing but microorganisms, single cell for most of it, multi cells for a little bit, and then it exploded. We had 3 billion years, three, over 3 billion years of nothing but microorganisms on our planet. So if we're looking for life on other worlds, our assumption is going to be the best we can find is microorganisms. So we're looking there, and we went to a different place with perseverance, because where we find these microorganisms are the coastlines, where things get preserved. So here, this is a view. Now the colors here aren't Mars. The, this is called the topography map. Y'all probably have seen those, right? Topographic. That the purple is deep and the green and yellow are high. So we're looking at a topography map of this Jezero crater. And I guess you can all see the three billion year old river coming in and a delta back here. Can you all see this here? Is it all visible? So that is a river and a delta on Mars from three billion years ago, still there. This is what it looks like from space. That's an actual view of this delta from space. So this is cool. We know we had rivers and deltas on Mars. And the Perseverance rover is there right now, only around here, been there for almost two years. Curiosity is cool, took a lot of cool stuff, told us Mars was habitable. This thing is actually looking for past life. That's what it's looking for. And it's not finding any, it's found organic molecules. Y'all know what those are, it means carbon-based molecules. Found some of those, not proof of life, but it's doing something really special. It's drilling cores all over as it goes. It's going to be there a long time, and it's been there two years, and it's drilled 10 cores. It's going to drill 43, and we're sending those back to Earth. We're going to do a Mars retrieval mission that's going to get those 43 cores and bring them back. For about 2031, you guys will be well on your way to working by then. And and they'll have 43 actual cores of Mars back on Earth by 2031. Everything goes Earth. So that's really cool. So that's one of my favorite things going on right now in the solar system. We're going to Mars and bringing Mars back to Earth. Any Mars questions before we move on? Can you, one thing that fascinates me about Mars is Olympus Mons. It's oh, yeah. yeah. You know, we, we, we jump through, yeah. let's go through a little bit of the geography. And, and put into perspective Mount Everest compared to that mountain. So we'll go back to Mars. And as we go through, I sometimes have to cut my thing short. We get it. All right, so we talked about two different sides of Mars. And this is good. I often talk about this. So we have the two sides of Mars. So we have the size that looks like the moon, a red moon, right? And then we have a side that doesn't look like that. Anytime in the solar system, you have a place that isn't cratered, something has got risen surface. On Earth, we have plate tectonics, we have erosion. What's going on on Mars? On this side of Mars, that has gotten rid of the craters. So what are these huge four bubbles? Somebody, the size of you. <laughs> mountains? They are mountains, but they're special kind of mountains. Volcanoes. They are giant volcanoes. So. So Mars does not have plate tectonics. So this side of Mars, for some reason, and we don't know why, hopefully we'll have some astronauts there to do better, it has been pushed up. It's the highest part of Mars. 
some kind of way, maybe it was a major impact, we really don't know, this side of Mars has been pushed up. And it just stayed in one spot, so we had giant volcanoes created there. Olympus Mons is about three times the height of Mount Everest. I don't even know the name of the other three, I think they're getting there, but they're about twice the size of Everest. Then, as it kept pushing up, this happened to Mars, it just cracked. It's a huge crack on the surface of Mars. It's called Valle Farinara, and it's as wide as the United States, and it's three miles deep. Grand Canyon is one it's huge across. You couldn't possibly even see across. So it's a giant feature. This part of Mars just cracked. So, okay, now we'll give you enough clues of why don't we have craters around these volcanoes. When it comes out of volcanoes. Oh, yeah. This is a giant lava field from these volcanoes. And very recent, the latest studies that I've seen, say 25 million years ago, these things still were from lava. We still have tiny eruptions that we've measured. We had a side of on Mars for a while and measured that. So this side of Mars is very recent. The other side of Mars, very old. So that's what's going on. And I'm sorry, I forgot about that. I, that I always talk about that because it's really cool because as we go in the solar system, anywhere, anywhere you don't see craters. You always assume there's the same amount of craters. So let's move on. So that's what's going on in Olympus Mons. Very big. And still, when you say active, that's old. But it, it's not been billions of years of these things. If so, you would see craters next time. We don't see any craters around here. OK, so now we're going to move on. Because we got this, we, I don't know how long we got to stay here. But the biggest planet is Jupiter. Jupiter. All right. Let's talk again how big is Jupiter. If you open up the top of Jupiter and start dropping Earth's in, how many? 1,000. 1,000? Exactly. No. 1,000 times the volume of Earth. 1,000. And just to keep that in perspective, you can put 1,000 Jupiters in our sun. Okay? So that's the size difference. 1,000. And it's, it's really massive. It weighs more than everything else in the solar system. Every other planet, of course, except the sun. Everything else put together, this thing is more massive. There's tons of cool stuff, of course. We've been at Jupiter with spaceships for over 20 years. We had Galileo there earlier, we have Juno there now. So we know a lot about this from spaceships. What's the, what's the little eye thing coming around over there? It's a hurricane. Big red spot. There's sometimes scientists give really good names to things, sometimes they don't. That's called the Great Red Spot. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's simple. So it's a simple and easy name to remember, Great cool. Red Spot. We've got another view with it right on top. It's going to pop up over here in about two seconds. One, two, So that is Jupiter's Great Red Spot taken from the latest Juno spacecraft. And that's it coming around. And that right there is about 1.6 times the diameter of Earth. Earth could fit inside this giant Earth. So the first telescope that could see this was in 1640. So it's been there for that many years. Do you get a number who first found it? Galileo. See. Galileo with the Earth's space telescope in 1610. But we didn't see the red spot. Our vision didn't report seeing it. Cassini, built in 1540, built one over about the belt, just about to ask who built the first telescope. And that was in 1610. And that was indeed Galileo. Galileo. You imagine, he's the first person to see the rings of Saturn. He's the first person, and when he looked at Jupiter, he saw Jupiter and then four little dots next to it that he hadn't seen before. But of course, you could see the stars all over. But he kept looking at it, and then dots were moving. And in 1610, after observing it for a while, he realized they were all going around Jupiter. It was the first time anybody had said something went around anything but the Earth. And of course, what happened to Galileo for that? Did he get killed? 
He spent his life in jail because he would not Basically. deny that these things were going around. So anyway, to this day, they're called the Galilean moons. Now, they have 80-something moons, but only four big ones. And the smallest one is about the size of the Earth's moon, and the other one's about one and a half times. And on our exploration, this is where we're concentrated. You imagine Jupiter, the most massive thing in our solar system, just pulls meteors and comets like crazy, right? Yeah. So if you're at the poor moon of Jupiter, this is the outermost of the giant moons. It's called Callisto. <laughs> and it looks like you would expect. It has been eaten up. It's the most cratered object in the solar system. Now, what you're seeing out there is solid ice. These moons are all made of rocky cores with ice on the outside. That's how they form with Jupiter. And in this one, so that's craters form on ice as well. So that's what this looks like. And we expect that all of the moons look like this. But the innermost moon looks like this. This is Io. Yeah. And Io is on fire. This, all you're seeing is sulfur rich lava. The whole moon is covered with lava. Okay. And a big circle coming around, as you all can see, that's a giant volcano, recent eruption of a giant volcano right there. It looks like a pineapple. And all the little ones, red dots, are other volcanoes. <laughs> Where are we getting this much energy from something the size of the moon to have this much energy? What? Yes, so, uh, Jupiter's gravity. When this thing goes around Jupiter, it's pulled and pushed by a, like a half a kilometer. It's just warm. And so just like a piece of steel you bend, it's just getting hot. It's just pulled and pushed, pulled and pushed. And we've got a moon that's on fire. But we go up one more. I think you guys might have to go to it. we got to get through a little bit of Jupiter. I don't know if we have to. What about Europa? Europa. So the next place we go is the coolest moon, maybe in the solar system. It's the next one out, and it's called Europa. I knew it. And that's Europa. Icy core, just like the list, though, but what's missing? Craters. It looks like veins. No craters. Well, so just like we talked about Mars, if you have no craters, something is covered up the craters. So what's going on here? We have a lot of cracks, right? Hubble has seen these cracks come up with water. Water shooting out of these cracks seems to cover all the craters. What's going on there? We have a icy core cool, out the outside. It's thick. It's about 10 miles thick. But so it must still be hot on the inside. The pull and push of Jupiter, just like it does on Io, it's a little further away here, melts some of that ice underneath. So there's water underneath the ice. But it's not a little bit of water. There's 50 miles of liquid water under the ice in between the core and the ice. That makes this plant, this moon, have twice as much water as Earth. We have a water world out there. So this is a huge discovery that we have worlds full of water. And of course, the first thing anybody thinks of is everywhere we have water on Earth? Life. Life. So this is a really big target. A European Space Agency took off on the 14th to go here, and we're taking off next year. We've got a bigger rocket and a smaller payload. They're sending a really big thing, so it's going to take a long time to get there. Um, but we want to explore this. We want to see if we can taste some of this stuff shooting up and see, does it have like organisms in it? So we're going to be getting there in the late 20s um, and just go around here. Now, the problem with this moon is you can't land on it because it's right in the middle of the radiation belts of Jupiter. We have a magnetic field, you may have heard of the Van Allen belts. That's our magnetic field going around and it's dangerous. It catches particles. Well, the magnetic field of Jupiter cuts right through here and it's completely just full of radiation. Of course, the ice would stop the radiation underneath, but it wouldn't stop it on spaceships going around it. So we're going to go around this thing, go around Jupiter, come back, and that's what we have. We have to time it so we can cover all the moon and see what we can catch. But you can't go in orbit around this thing. The fourth giant moon is in between Callisto and Europa and looks very much like it's in between Callisto and Europa. It doesn't have as many craters as it should, it has cracks. So this is Ganymede, it's the biggest moon in the solar system. And 
very sure it has water as well. But the water doesn't come through cracks, so we don't know if that water's ever come through the surface. But this one you can go around. So the European Space Agency is going to go around Europa, it's going to go around Callisto, and then it's going to go in orbit around this moon. So that's what's going on. Really cool stuff going on in Jupiter. Why? That's for sure. You got to get out of here? All right. That's okay. All right, we'll do one more quick thing about this planet, which of course is Saturn. Again, too many cool things. We're going to go look at two again. My favorite things are where we're going to be able to explore our moons. And there's a small moon. This is only 200 miles across. And it's called Enceladus. It's, it's just like a little sibling of Europa, right? It should have more, it looks like it's just more craters. But down here at the South Pole, it has giant cracks. I mean, giant cracks. And they're blue because it's water. This top is a cartoon, but the bottom picture here is an actual picture by the Cassini spacecraft of that moon shooting water into space nonstop. <coughs> this moon is constantly shooting water in space. We know we have another ice that will be water. Moon. We probably have many. Cool thing about this one is it's very thin ice because it's small and it's shooting nonstop. But unfortunately, we're not long here in the past. Um, probably in the 24th still a ways away. NASA doesn't even have a mission, hard mission. These things were just found out recently, so planning missions takes a while. Yeah, absolutely. Look, oh yeah, look, look at the Celtus and fly through this. And this moon you can land on. But that's going to come later. Because we first went by Saturn in the late 70s, early 80s with Voyager 2, we saw this other moon that was way more interesting, and this is where we're going to go back. And this is called Titan. Titan has clouds. It's the only moon with any kind of atmosphere. It's got a thick atmosphere. It's a small moon, one seventh of gravity. Well, it's as big as our, it's one and a half times the Earth. Uh, so it's big, but that's still small. Um, mostly ice around it, that's what we think. Mostly ice, but the atmosphere is nitrogen, which is the same thing we have in ours, right? Nitrogen and oxygen. But it's pretty thick. It's twice as thick as our atmosphere. So it's, it's really thick. Now it's minus 290 degrees. But at that temperature and that pressure, this world is the only other place in the solar system with liquid on the surface. There's rivers, rains, there's seas, it's methane. So methane at this temperature is a liquid. This world is a lie at minus 290 degrees. Lakes, rivers. The rivers are carving into the ice and making valid looks like Earth. We haven't seen it that much. We can only see it through the clouds. So we're going there with a helicopter. We're going back with something called Dragonfly that leaves in 27, so it's a ways away. But it's as big as those Voyager, I mean, the Mars rovers, but it's going to fly. It's going to land, do all its fancy stuff, and instead of rolling at one mile an hour like the ones on Mars, it's going to pick up and fly and move all around this moon to see what kind of chemistry can occur at minus 290 degrees. It's not a question if there's carbon. Methane is carbon. That's what it's made of. C4. So it's got lots of carbon. So what goes on at minus 290 degrees? So these are some of the cool things that are coming on. There's all this stuff, but we only have a little bit of time. So that's OK. Y'all got lots to do. And we didn't know y'all were coming in. <laughs> they told us, and y'all were walking in the door. <laughs> so we didn't have time to put up a really good teenage talk. So thanks for being good, you know. And I think y'all have lots of other stuff to do.